Good morning. It's good to be with you. And we're going to look at a um, passage in Luke this morning. But my first question to you is, what is your favourite carol? Well, one of mine is one uh, to which I give grateful thanks to James Montgomery. And it begins like this. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn King. And it fits very well the theme of our passage this morning to look at the birth, the announcement and of the birth of our Messiah. And we'll find that in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And I'm going to read that in a moment, but first let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for a new morning. Thank you that we can wake refreshed and come before you, come into your presence and read your word. Lord, we thank you that it comes to us afresh every day. We bless you for it, Lord. And as we read and look at this passage, may it speak to our hearts. Father, thank you for the wonderful provision of a saviour. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. So let me read the passage to you, beginning of verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields, nearby keeping watch of their flocks at night an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid i bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of david a savior has been born to you he is christ the lord this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. So that is the passage. I'm going to use this structure of this carol to help us look at the, the, what we learn from it. And here's the first verse in its entirety. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. So who are we describing here? Who, who are these angels from the realms of glory? Well, they are glorious beings, mighty warriors who do God's bidding obediently. They look on in wonder at the events that happened here. The creator, son of God, becomes a baby. They are messengers of God's good news, good news of great joy. They're a wonderful choir of choristers singing glory to God in the highest. Don't get lost in the nativity play image of the angels. Every time they appear in the Bible, men fall to the ground in fear and dread. So now let's move on to verse 2 of the carol. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. The shepherds hear the call to go, to go and see the Messiah. And they hurried off and found him. But why on earth did God choose shepherds? Well, there had been a heritage of shepherding in the messianic line. Abraham was a shepherd, Jacob, Joseph, and especially David. But by New Testament times, the role was regarded extremely poorly. In to terms of today's parlance, they were the untouchables of the Hindu caste system, the epsilons of the brave new world and the C3s of the socio-economic analysis. Jesus subsequently describes himself as the good shepherd and identifies himself with the poor 
and the outcasts. That's why the shepherds are given the privilege of being first to see him as the babe. This also fulfills what is known as the Jesus Manifesto in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So returning to the carol, verse 3 describes the visit of the Magi, which is outside of my brief in this passage, and I'll leave that for someone else to cover. So I move on to verse 4, which is relevant to us. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Does this describe you as a humble worshipper of the Saviour, waiting in expectant hope for that moment, when the Lord shall appear in all his glory and take us home? I hope so. After all, this is a central theme of our faith. Peter tells us in 2 Peter 3, 13, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. And so now finally we turn to verse 5. Sinners wrung with true repentance, doomed for guilt to endless pains. Justice now revokes the sentence. Mercy calls you. Break the chains. Even if you don't consider yourself as a saint, it is true that you are a sinner. If you have known that blood-curdling thought of being under God's judgment for your sin and recognised the desperate state that you were in, now you can rejoice in the mercy that breaks the chains of your guilt. So here's the call to you. Are you a messenger of good news like the angels? Are you a pastor of the flock like the shepherds? Are you a forgiven sinner longing for his appearing? Then what else can you do? But come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. So if you get the chance, enjoy singing this carol at Christmas, especially now that you have a deeper understanding of it. But let's conclude this morning as we worship Christ together. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that we can come into the presence of the living God and be accepted. We thank you that in the work that Jesus did on the cross when he became a man was sufficient for our salvation. But we thank you that he came as a babe. He came as one of us. He became a man. But he is the God-man, the one who is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we thank you, Lord, that we can worship you. Be with us this morning. Lighten our hearts, Lord. Help us to know that we are free. The chains are gone. We belong to you. And we thank you for this wonderful time of Christmas when we can remember that you became man for a span. Thank you, Lord. Be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me this morning. Enjoy your day together.